At the end of our last segment, we had thrown a piece of clay and made us a, a bow. We placed texture in the bow, and it was at the stage this piece is at right now, and that is it's softened clay. It's just been thrown, and at this point, the only thing we can do with this piece is allow it to dry before we do any other work to it. So at this stage, it'll be put on the drying rack like those pieces you see over there. Once it is adequately dried, then it's brought over and it's placed in the kiln for its first firing. And that firing is known as the bisque firing, B-I-S-Q-U-E. Once it's fired, the cycle, and that cycle depends. There are slow bisque phases and there are rapid bisque phases. I utilize usually the slow bisque phase, which takes roughly about 14 hours. Uh, that goes up to a cone 0404, and which is roughly a little over 1900 degrees. Once it's adequately cool, we can go in and take the piece out of the kiln. And at that point, it's converted from the softened clay to a much harder piece, which now can be prepared for glazing. So at this stage, we'll allow it to cool off a little more, and then we'll take it and prepare it for glazing. Our piece is now cooled enough, and we're going to now prepare it for glazing. And what we're going to do to prepare it for glazing is first place wax on the bottom, on the foot, and if you notice the ring that was put into the piece after it had gotten leather hard and before it was bisque fired, this ring is going to give us a line to work on so that we'll place our wax here so that our finished glaze will stop at this line and hopefully not run down any further. By placing this line here, it gives us a good finish line to, to know where to place the wax and also tell us where our glazes will end. To do this, we have an electric skillet, just like out of your kitchen. We have it full of wax, just like paraffin wax that you would use uh, for the ladies that have ever done any canning activity. But this is paraffin wax. And what I'm going to do is gently hold the piece and center it in the, in, the, in the wax, go down and allow the wax to touch the foot, pick it up and see that I need a little more there, so I'll go back in and do it just a little more on this side. And go around and just make sure that it gets placed on the piece to about the same level all the way around. And I think you can see that that's been achieved. Now, the hot wax needs just a very few minutes to dry. And once that wax is hardened and is dried on the piece, then it'll be prepared to be placed in the glaze. Well, now our wax has become hardened, so our piece is now ready for glazing. First thing we're going to do, we're going to take just a towel and wipe off the inside and around the outside of the bowl to make sure there's no residue that's left on the piece from the bisque firing stage that you saw a moment ago. So once the piece has been cleaned out well, the wax has been applied, we're now going to prepare it, prepare the glaze for the application to the bowl. The way we do that now, the glazes, as you know, come in the form of chemicals that you have recipes for. You create the correct recipe for the particular glaze you're wanting to make. You put them in a certain amount of water, depending again on the chemical structure that you want to achieve. And uh, at that point, the glazes are then mixed and sieved. So you've got the chemicals, then the water, and then you run it through a sieve, and at that point, you have the glaze mixed. Um, as the glaze is set in this division or this area of our studio, uh, they sometimes will separate from the water as they sit in their buckets. We've got each of these in a five gallon bucket and uh, typically when I mix, I mix about three and a half to four gallons. And so in between glazings, you want to always make sure that before you use the glaze again that you remix it. So what we use to do that is a, a paint mixing device that you see here on the end of a regular uh, drill like you'd have in any workshop. We're going to start with this glaze. We're going to use today on our piece We're going to use three glazes. We're going to use one called muted gold And we're going to dip the piece into it 100% of the way after it's dried an adequate amount of time We're going to go to antique iron and then once we've got the antique iron on there and it's dried adequately We're going to finish with a collar our top piece a uh, top color called eggshell So what we'll do now we'll start out by mixing the the uh, muted gold. Once it's mixed adequately, it's now ready to be placed on the on the piece that we're going to uh, deglaze. And um, what we're going to use are some glazing tongs. We're going to take the piece 
pinch it between the glazing tongs, take it into the glaze, and we're going to hold it there for roughly five seconds. So we'll go in and do a one, two, three, four, five. When we come out, we're going to take a wet sponge, and you remember the wax we put on the bottom to keep the glaze from sticking to it. You can see that there's basically no glaze on there, just some little small bubbles of glaze, and we're going to lightly just wipe those pieces off, and that keeps our bottom clean. And so now, we will allow this first glaze coat to set till it's adequately dried. Once our piece has dried from the first glaze coat that we put on it, we can now prepare it for the second glaze coat. And what we've done here, we've got our same glazing tongs, we've got the piece we're going to use. We can take our mixing device, mix this glaze as well. Once it's adequately mixed, then we'll take our piece and we're going to do the same procedure we did just a moment ago. We're going to dip it into the glaze and cover it 100% with the second glaze, which in this case is a glaze called antique iron. Once again, about five seconds. So one, two, three, four, five. We come out of the glaze again. Once again, you notice the glaze running off of the wax that we placed on the bottom. Once it sort of has dripped uh, all of the excess glaze off, we wipe off the bottom. And then, as before, we're going to allow this to dry an adequate length of time until we apply the collar, which will be our third step. Now we've got our second coat of glaze on, and it is dried, and so we're preparing now to put our last or third coat on, but it's only going to be a collar, and the collar is going to only be up here at the top. If you notice the sight line, we'll try to be within the sight line and maybe slightly below it. So once again, we prepare our glaze by remixing it somewhat. Because putting a piece in and just wanting to do the collar can be difficult, we're going to use a, a previously glazed piece and place some of our glaze in there, and this will facilitate us to do this much easier than trying to dip this piece into the large bucket. So once we've got our glaze where we want it, we'll take our piece that we're going to put the, the collar on, go straight into here, trying to get a pretty even piece around all the top. And once we achieve that, then allow it to drip. So now we've got our third layer on, which we call the collar, and this piece is ready for glaze firing. It will be put into the kiln after this is dried, uh, allowed to fire again to about uh, 2300 degrees, which is cone 6, which will facilitate it to be good for uh, food. It can be put in a microwave or a conventional oven. Also can be put in your dishwasher. So at this point, we've got three layers of glaze on. The piece is ready for the glaze firing, which is the final firing. That'll take place and once again take roughly 15 hours. Uh, so we'll get it ready for that and show it to you when it's finished.